All right, guys, so we're getting ready. I'm doing a mod here on a Spyderco a Manix 2 Lightweight. Uh, so you guys have seen this on my channel. A um, bunch of people have asked me how I did this. Uh, so I'm going to do a video here showing. Uh, you can see here that the rivets in this one, this is the exact same knife. This is the Cutlery Shop exclusive uh, Manix Lightweight in S90V. Uh, so this is a twin to this knife and we are going to get rid of those rivets and I'll disassemble the uh, Manix 2 Lightweight and show you how this all works. Um, I just covered it up with tape uh, just to keep any metal shavings and stuff. Uh, one thing I will tell you, these rivets are quite hard. You don't want to drill them out. <clears throat> so a lot of times people will, you know, with a, with a drill press or a drill, try and drill these rivets out. Uh, generally speaking, what will happen is uh, you're going to heat up the surface of the, the rivet and then your drill bit will catch the rivet because they're extremely hard, start spinning it, uh, which will create more friction, and then you'll end up just pushing the rivet through a big melted mess of plastic. So the way to go about doing this is with a... Uh, I use a Dremel, or, or well, it's not actually a Dremel, it's a... Milwaukee cordless uh, rotary tool, just like a Dremel. Um, in my live video the other day, I just showed the uh, uh, soldering iron that I use that's also 12 volt uh, lithium Milwaukee. Uh, so I have several tools that run these same batteries. Anyway, the bit that I'm using is a Dremel bit. You can see right here, this is a tungsten carbide cutter and <clears throat> it looks just like this. Okay, so what we're going to do is, let me get the tool chucked up here. All right, now I've got my, there we go, got my cutter in my uh, Dremel tool here, and I'm going to start, uh, most importantly, you need to have hardware. Uh, to replace this with which is very very difficult to get your hands on I can tell you from experience uh, But uh, let me show you what the hardware looks like so you've got the female side Which is not tooled with the stuff that I have right here, and then you have the screw which is a number eight Torx uh, And you can see these already they came with a little bit of Loctite on them but that is the hardware that we will be replacing. Let me get this screwed together. That is the hardware that we will be replacing these rivets with. So it looks a lot better with black hardware. Okay, so um, real quick, I've just got a little uh, vise that's like a suction cup. And it does have this little collar here, which allows you, uh, you loosen that up and then you can, it's like a bowl joint. Um, so actually let me put it like this it might be a little easier to see hopefully okay all right so I'm gonna start I'm, I, I'm gonna start on this bottom one down here uh, the Dremel is gonna be noisy so I'm not very good with uh, um, Editing videos, but we'll see. I, I may, I don't know, speed this up. I don't know. I'm, sh I'm not sure what I'll do. But anyway, uh, let me get into it and I'm going to show you how we're going to do this. Okay, I've just got a little, uh, little snap on uh, pick here. And we're going to see if we've got enough to pop the head off that rivet. Nope. All right, got to go a little further.
All right, there comes the rivet. Oh yeah. Okay. And then I've got a little uh, punch here. Uh, All right, so if you can see that one is now the rivet is punched through and there is a washer let me see if I can pop it out of there there it is of course and I dropped it on the floor well anyway you could uh, I'll find that later but now we're going to move on so now you can see that rivet is ready to be pushed through the other side and i'll show you that when i get there um, i'm going to go ahead and grind out these other two rivets and then we'll come back and take a look All right, there's the washer there for the third one. All right, let me get that off of there. Okay, now you can see why I uh, taped all that stuff up because it gets uh, quite messy. All right, now I'm going to uh, move my vise back into a straight up position here because we're going to use it as an anvil okay now we're going to go ahead and punch these rivets through just like that Here is your rivets right there. And these are the little washers that are on the back side. You can see there. So there are two of the rivets. Let me move my vise out of the way. And let's get this tape off of here and pull this thing apart. First and foremost, we're going to go ahead and get the blade out of the way. Um, it's really difficult to uh, get your, you, you cannot get the blade out without um, pulling the scales apart a little bit because of the pivot barrel. And so the pivot barrel, right now you can see the pivot assembly. We've got both washers on. Um, and the pivot, but you can see that the pivot sticks out both sides. It actually rides in uh, the plastic. So I'm going to go ahead and just cover this blade up. We'll just set that to the side for right now. And then, so you can see we've got this kind of figure eight or uh, shaped piece. And I'll show you what that's all about here in a minute. Now, on the backs of these knives, it looks like because you've got this line right here, 
It looks like this orange piece is a backspacer. It is not, or well, I mean it is, but it's integrated. This is all one piece here. So you can see the backspacer there is on uh, this side of the knife. And then here is how uh, a Mandix Lightweight is put together. So this black component here is actually metal uh, or steel. And that's why I couldn't get that. Oop. About lost the ball there. Um, so you can see there, there's the ball for the Manix. Here's the ball cage. So you could put a titanium ball cage in a lightweight if you, you know, we're doing this work. Um, and then you've got these two steel components on each side. Good Lord. So you can see those right there. And then here is uh, the backspacer. This also, is, you know, uh, holds the uh, the spring and stuff for the uh, ball lock. So pretty straightforward. So now what I'm going to do is I have to cut this rivet off right there uh, with a cutoff wheel. And then we'll be able to push that the rest of the way through. All right, here we go. A little faster than we needed it to be. So now you can see that I have cut that off flush with the backspacer. And I did grind that off just a little bit because I want to make sure that I don't have my... Uh, the the uh, rivet isn't mushroomed at all because it's pretty hard to, to shove it through that hole. Um, but I'll touch the paint up on that when we go to put this back together. Um, you can't see that portion of it anyway. All you see is the backside, which is totally fine. Uh, the paint is quite tough on these, so you don't have to worry too much about that, um, scratching the paint on that. I don't know what the, the coating is exactly, but but it's pretty good. All right, I'll show you real quick. Now you can see where that rivet is. You can see that it's moved right there. So we're gonna go ahead and punch that the rest of the way through and then we'll be good to go. Then I'll show you what you got to do from there. All right. So there's my components. We've got the backspacer, that piece, and this piece. So there you go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this all cleaned up. And then we're going to go ahead and start. I'm going to show you your next step. And there's the rivet that came out of there. So... All right, I'll see you back here in a minute. All right, so the next step, we're putting in this hardware, and let me show you here. Um, as you can see, the holes uh, that the rivets went through are too small for the hardware to go into. So uh, we need to go ahead and drill these holes out. Uh, in the, um, We have to drill it out in this piece as well as... Uh, we have to drill out the backspacer and these two pieces right here. So I'm going to show you how to do that. All right. So uh, first thing you want to do is figure out, let me zero this, uh, figure out the diameter that you're looking for. In this case here, we've got 156 thousandths uh, right there. And... We're going to get our drill bit here, and our drill bit measures 154 thousandths. So that's just about perfect um, because we, you know, the drill bit will uh, make just a tiny bit uh, larger hole than what's in here. And so, two thou, that's perfect. Uh, so, we're going to go ahead and drill these out. And for this, um, I'm not going to get too carried away um, just because it doesn't need it. Uh, but I'm just going to do this with a hand drill. 
uh, and just so I can show you on camera here. Uh, so first things first, now we're just going to do it like this right here. Uh, we'll drill this hole. All right, so now that we've got the hole drilled, now, and what I'm going to do, I want these to be tight, so because um, this side is not tooled, uh, and the this particular hardware that I'm using here, uh, these are actually D-shaped. Uh, so I'll show you that here in just a second. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a little uh, uh, super glue and glue these in uh, to the uh, the opposite side. I guess I should get them on frame here. Um, you hopefully can see the D shape there. There, there's the flat right there. Uh, so anyway. Um, I'll uh, let me drill these other uh, holes here real quick, and then I'll I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay. Now, like I said, we're going to put the the female side in the side that has the backspacer on it, and so then. Uh, this side here, which will be the much easier, you'll be able to remove the screws and pop this scale off. And then, you know, your backspacer and your ball lock and all that stuff will stay in the side that has the backspacer on it. All right. Now we need to drill each one of these pieces. All um, right. So there you go. I've got the hole drilled uh, through that piece there. And then... Now, I'll just go ahead and do the backspacer. So All right, so now we're uh, ready to reassemble this guy. Um, and here are the parts. So I've got my uh, three new pieces of hardware in right there. And um, I've got the new uh, pivots or the pivot support in. So first things first, we need to start out the ball cage and it's got this little flat piece it's kind of hard to see Let's see if i can point it out here so there's this little little part right here and if i sw flip it over it, it's really hard to see on camera here uh, but there's like a little shelf that holds the ball in that has to go towards uh, the bottom side of the knife um so uh, where oh here's my bowl. Uh, it's it's kind of hard to explain, but once you re take this apart, so that little shelf keeps the ball from falling out this direction. Uh, so once you, uh, if you re take one of these apart, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, and this is where things get a little bit hectic uh, putting these knives together uh, because some of these parts kind of have to go in at the same time. Um, so we've got our ball, our ball cage, and the backspacer, and they all kind of have to fall in place together. Hopefully I'll do this. It's a little more difficult to do this on camera, but... Hopefully you guys will be able to see what I'm doing here. So I'm dropping all this down together and getting it on my uh, new piece of hardware there. And there we go. It's down all the way. All right, now I need to get the spring on there. So I kind of tilt that up a little bit and get the spring on that There we go. Get it seated down into its position. So now I've got the ball in 
the spring, the backspacer, all that is in. Okay, everything's looking good. Okay, now I've already put my uh, pivot, which is D-shaped, and I put a little KPL on, and we've got our bronze washers. I'm just using the surface tension of the KPL to hold my washers where I want them. Uh, so now I have to pull back on the ball cage and get the blade in position. So just like that right there. Now I'm going to get my pivot screw and I'm going to screw this in uh, from the back side here uh, just so I don't lose what we've already got done here. Okay, now at this point, oops, let me get it up in the camera. Now we need to put our other side uh, pivot brace on. And again, it is D-shaped. So you gotta make sure you have it on there correctly or in the correct orientation. Just like that. And now we're ready to put the scale on. So, okay. I'm gonna start putting a couple body screws in here so we can get this thing buttoned up. We'll leave the body screws slightly loose. And so I can, uh, if I have to make any minor fine adjustments, uh, putting uh, the blade and, or, you know, centering the blade up and stuff like that, I can do that uh, at the end. Okay. grab my other side pivot screw here get that in sorry if I'm not really doing this on camera I'm trying to pay attention to the camera and pay attention to what I'm doing here um, all right oh, my pivots way too tight but blade is pretty centered at the moment Still really, really, oops, sorry, I just bumped the camera. Still really tight on the pivot, but I'm just trying to get things worked in here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up this top screw on the back spacer and the middle body screw. Okay. Pivot is still pretty tight, uh, but we're looking pretty good and centered. So I like that. All right, now I'm gonna tighten up the rest of my body heart, body screws here. Okay, and we've got one left. Uh, for the uh, pocket clip here and the gentleman that's going to be carrying this knife uh, this is for a friend of mine uh, which you guys will see uh, shortly here what's uh, going on but so I am 
gifting this knife to him because I know he's going to love it. Um, he likes orange and black and he loves the Manix Lightweight. So, um, actually, <laughs> I just set that up for left hand carry. Like a dummy. Let me flip that around real quick. Okay. There we go. So action is going to have to get worked in here a little bit. Like I said, I've got it a little bit tight. Uh, but I'm doing that kind of intentionally just to kind of speed up breaking this thing in a little bit. But so there you go. That's how you change the hardware on a Manix 2 lightweight. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, as you can see, it's not, I mean, that you, you got to do some stuff. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but uh, it is possible to get it done. And so here's the pair of knives now with black hardware. I think they look fantastic. Certainly better than the uh, shiny hardware that came with them from the factory. So super cool. You can see mine has my collector club number on it and the other one does not. Uh, but yeah, awesome knives. Really digging the, uh, the hardware change. I think it's fantastic. And you can see this one here is broken in perfectly. Um, and this one here will be like that here uh, very shortly. Uh, we just gotta, gotta get it worked in. So anyway, guys, uh, yeah, there you go. That's how you do it. Thanks a lot. I'm out.